It's in the name. Welcome into the Helping Healing Humor podcast with Ben and Travis. Today, we wrap up our trip to Alaska, to the Alaska State Youth Forum and Anchorage Church of Christ, uh, that trip. And as we put the cap on it, uh, we'll discuss all the things leading up to coming back home right after these important messages. This episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast is brought to you by the 2023 Heritage Event on Saturday, August 26th, featuring an incredible night of music from the front men of country, the Secret Sisters, and Cadence Baker. General admission tickets and table sponsorships are available for purchase. For more information, visit www.hcu.edu. The mission of Heritage Christian University is simple. They aim to advance the churches of Christ by equipping servants through undergraduate and graduate programs. HCU produces effective communicators of the gospel, focusing on evangelism and a commitment to scripture. Heritage Christian University offers the following degrees, Associate of Arts in Biblical Studies, Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies, Master of Arts, Master of Ministry, and Master of Divinity. HCU is accredited by the Association for Biblical Higher Education, and is an associate member of the Association of Theological Schools. Since 1968, Heritage Christian University has offered affordable degrees in biblical studies, allowing graduates to thrive in their ministries without the burden of loan debt. For the fall 2023 semester, HCU is offering full tuition scholarships for graduate-level students. For more information about Heritage Christian University or the annual Heritage event, visit www.hcu.edu. I'm Travis Creasy. That's all pro counselor Ben Hayes. What is happening, world? We're glad that you guys are with us always. It is a pleasure to be on the podcast and to know that you're out there listening. Yeah, it's been great. Uh, it's been booming. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the podcast coming along. We try to put out some good content weekly, and then Ben's got the Friday refresh, and we're getting ready for the 5k and we're getting ready for dodgeball and we're trying to raise money for st jude and it's hard to keep up with it all uh on our end uh but we appreciate any of you that choose any of you that you choose to do uh that's that's wonderful we would encourage you to join our facebook group facebook.com backslash groups backslash ben and travis we're probably still doing our ruth reading plan for the month of june walk in running exercising spiritual physical challenges, all kinds of crazy fun stuff. And right in the middle of returning home from a lifetime bucket list trip to Alaska. And we've got episodes covering uh, one through six, days one through six. And so we're going to talk a little bit about day seven and eight uh, and, and our time there in Alaska. And of course, we returned home on day nine. And I'm recording from the beach because, you know, social media influencer status, right? No, it just <laughs> happened to line up this way. You know, I feel like I'm I'm the epitome of what Ben talks about. We're always comparing our lives to everyone's best on social media. And uh, let me tell you, I'm living the best life, but I am so tired. If you're watching the video, you <laughs> probably can tell. Yeah, when I when uh, you first popped up on the video for me to talk to you, you were sitting there like, you know, and didn't know I could see you. And man, you looked like you had uh, roasted. You'd been beaten up by your kids in the pool. So, which is probably what had actually happened. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, man, Alaska was something. I mean, it's it, you sent me a text today, and it was like, I think we've ruined all other nature scenes or all other you know, scenic views for our lifetime by going to Alaska. So, you people in Alaska can. Uh, feel the pride of your homeland uh, there and that home state of Alaska is just I mean it's beautiful and there was just so much good stuff and we saw about two percent of the state maybe yeah (laughs) that that. that's crazy (laughs) wild uh yeah you've pretty much ruined it i mean there's nothing that really compares everything looks like it's on a green screen you you know you want to touch it to make sure it's real um and so we kind of get into moving i think we left off talking about seward and how cool of an area that was and so then we woke up and we got moving towards homer and homer spit 
and yes, we'll get to that. But uh, <laughs> right out the gate, we're traveling. Uh, our first stop is going to be Anchor Point, but we're traveling, and we see a moose and its babies. And of course, us wanting to see moose, we whip it around. Uh, we have a cop in the car, so that helps. We whip around and we go back <laughs> to get photos. And it's like, if you not seen the videos, we've got video of it. Ben's got great pictures. You know, the little baby moose turns around and looks like it smooches its mom right on the face. You know, I don't think they actually kissed, but I mean, it, that's what it looked like. Yeah, it was a really cool moment. Really, with a lot of the ones that we saw, um, I think every... Just about every moose, not every moose I saw, but most of them had babies with them. And it was kind of interesting because we saw moose with their babies. We saw doll sheep, uh, you know, the, the the sheep up on the mountains with their, their babies. Uh, I saw some bear uh, we'll get to a little later. Uh, they had babies. It was like there was babies everywhere. You know, it's like it's like going to, you know, church. You know, there's babies everywhere. Spring has uh, sprung. <laughs> spring has sprung. And so... Um, I got back home and I've seen deer and they've had babies with them. So, uh, it's just kind of crazy, uh, how many, um, not, not little bitty babies just yet, but they've got some, so, uh, some young ones, but it's just, it was just really cool to see that, um, those moose and they're huge, like massive animals. Um, and then their, their babies are not tiny either. I mean, they're, they're pretty good size, you know, they'd be a good size dog. Um, but you want to go cuddle them, but you know, mom would trample you. So yeah, you, just, you don't, that's a dumb way to die. Alaska is like God, right? You're like, man, I want to get close, but there's still like a little respect. You got to have some respect, a little healthy fear of the things in Alaska. Um, and God, to the, that's, a, that's a really good illustration for God. Cause it's like, man, I want to get close, but there's also the like, this is dangerous. There's some dread. There's some terribleness. There's a certainty to this. Yeah, we, we see the moose and we get to Anchor Point, which is really cool. And, and Ben, you did the Friday Refresh. Your latest episode is about what we saw there from, is it Norman Lowell? Yeah, Norman Lowell. Uh, he moved to Alaska um, just during the homestead, when you could do the Homestead Act. I don't know if I'm assuming that's not a thing at this point. I think that was, you know, right after it became a state to try to maybe encourage people to get there. I don't know a lot about that. So maybe I, I may be off base, but, but that was what I read. He, he went, um, got some land, uh, due to that act. And <laughs> I didn't talk about all this, but his land was on top of a hill, no road going to it. Um, he, had to basically hike up to where it was at, build his own little shed, and we went in there. Um, was not a very big or comfortable looking place for winter time. I thought, how did they not freeze to death? And I was told that he hiked up the mountain with the stove, the big metal stove on his back, just to get up there and have one because there was no road going up there. Now, eventually there was a road. Eventually he built a nicer place, but he's famous from the standpoint, at least around Alaska. And if you Google him, you can see stuff. He was a um, incredible painter. Like, I mean, I've, it's one person told me, they said, if you stand close enough to his paintings of the glacier, you can feel the cold air off of them. I mean, it was, uh, that's the kind of the, the somebody at Soldatna told me that the, that night she's like, it's true. You can stand close to him and you can feel the cold air. But I mean, it is so realistic and how he was able to paint some of the things he did, but he came up there and, and really made a name for himself. Some pretty expensive artwork, um, but he's a member of the church too. He's a believer. You walk in the door, there's a sign there that says, Hey, if you're, if you like these paintings, I, I hope that it'll make you think of the one who actually did better than I did making yeah. this world that you're looking at. Pretty awesome. I, I'm going to go ahead and say it like everyone who lives in Alaska is tougher than I am. You know, there's that, there's that list of toughness that we all think we fall on that category somewhere. Uh, but like every citizen of Alaska is before me easily. Um, Everything in Alaska can kill you. 
Yes. Like, I think, I, I was thinking, hey, we're going to Alaska. There's no, like, rattlesnakes or copperheads or uh, water moccasins, cottonmouths or whatever. And then you get up there and they're like, don't walk on the beach because it'll lock your feet in and you'll drown or the high tide will, you know, come in and you'll freeze to death. Oh, yeah, don't swim in the water for too long because it will give you hypothermia. And, oh, if you get close to the moose, they'll trample you. And then there's bears. The list just kept growing. That's what the sea line. Yeah. Avoid. Oh, there's cages outside of our places on the North Slope where you check for the polar bears before you walk outside. The cages aren't for the polar bears. They're for you. Keep them out. I, yeah, I mean, and then you got bald eagles around <laughs> staring at everybody like, mess around and find out. And they um, will fly off with your cats or dogs yeah. or whatever. So Norman Lowell donated the land uh, that right behind his house, the art gallery is the World Christian Broadcasting that broadcasts the gospel translated in Franklin, Tennessee, and blasts that to Russia and Asian countries there in the Pacific. And so we got to go visit there, got the tour. KNLS. Uh, one of the engineers. So that was cool. Yeah. yeah, KNLS is the name of the station, I believe. And um, I finally figured out who it was that I knew that worked there, uh, Josh Pierce, uh, who does Erupt. That's who he was working for up until here recently. Um, he was working for World uh, Christian Broadcasting. So um, anyway, we were talking on the phone and I was like, it's you. That's who it is that I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, he was he was pretty excited that we got to tour the place and, and saw the towers. And he told me, he said, the rumor is you can stand under the towers with a light bulb and it'll shatter. That That's how much uh, power it's pumping out. But I don't know if that's that's nice. true or not, but. Nice. But that, I mean, it's it's got to be pumping some great stuff because, like you said, it goes from there to Russia to China to the, some of the other Asian countries, and they said that some of the signal from that one can be picked up in even as far down as Australia. So, well, I'm just saying this: when they want to start broadcasting the Helping Healing Humor podcast, sign us up. I'm down. I mean, you uh, know, I would love to hear somebody translate us into Russian or <laughs> Mandarin Chinese. But anyways, I have no idea. I yeah. mean, it would be it uh, would be bad. They can't speak that badly. So from there, we made our way to Homer uh, and more infamously Homer spit the spit of Homer. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, which is basically I guess it's kind of like Seward in that it's a stop for the cruise lines. And they let the boats off, and you can go there and shop. And it's literally like these little spits of land. Uh, yeah, it's like, connected by a road, and it's got little shops. It's got beaches. It's got a dock, all that good stuff. Yeah, I was looking at this um, picture that I had taken, you know, when we were coming down the mountain, sort of, you know, between where Anchor Point was and Homer Spit area. But, you know, and you could look and see the that little – strip of land that we drove out on and you know homer's got a town on the main part but then you get on this little it's just a it looks like they've built it up and some of it at least uh into just a roadway that goes out to this you know harbor area and then there's some stores and storefronts that you know places to eat we ate some really good pizza um out on the spit and then we um walked the beach you could walk on that beach that was a good thing um, I think it was there that we saw the Reliance, which is one of the, the boats that's off of um, the Deadliest Catch, which used to be my groove. I used to watch that show all the time. Uh, so that was really cool to see some of the, and I think there was another one there. I can't remember which one he said, but I got a picture of the front of the Reliance. Um, but yeah, it was just really cool to see these massive boats. But like you said, everywhere we went, Almost everywhere we went, there was a scenic view. Oh, so yeah. even there, there's boats, and then there's these massive mountains in the background, and just always a beautiful scenery. Well, if you love mountains, and you love, or you love the ocean, or you, you love the snow, both places here, except there's <laughs> wind off of both of them. Ooh. But you know, Homer Spitz definitely one of those places where it was like one minute the wind is almost unbearable. You pull your coat up. And then the next minute it's sunny and you're like, you know, taking off layers. And so, you know, they've even got us beat down here in the South with the changing of uh, the seasons from 10 seconds 
uh, to the next 10. You know, just never know what you're going to get. Um, and so we loaded up there. We left. We came back to Kenai. And I guess that's the night that we went and hung out with the Elmores, right? Am I understanding that? Is that when we ate with them? Yeah, I think we went over and ate with them and another family uh, and Jesse's brother was there and uh, Mama Elmore made us some incredible uh, food and uh, we got to just kind of hang out and do that for a little while um, before heading back over to their uh, Airbnb, which if you are ever in Kenai, um, that's the place you need to go check out their Airbnb. That is it the is. place. That's also the meal where uh, the suggestion was that you could go see bears in one of the parks mm -hmm. and from, from Jesse's older brother. And so we loaded up at like 9.30 p.m. Because, you know, Which it's is still, still daylight. It's still like 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Yeah. And we loaded up and we went and rode around a park, which Jesse said was 20 minutes away, which is always Alaskan for it's an hour away. And so we drove out there and rode around the backwoods of the national park. I don't know if it's a national park, but it was a park hunting for bear, looking for bear. We weren't shooting bear, but we were looking for bear. Not hunting. Uh, yeah. And uh, man, talk about beautiful. He pulled us up to was it ski lack is that how you say it that's right Maddie's out there like making fun of us right now because we can't say <laughs> these names but uh forget you Addie. uh so <laughs> um and and so he pulls us down there and there's a bald eagle on this side a bald eagle on this side and the the lake is as smooth as glass oh yeah i mean it's not making a noise there's no waves and the sun comes down. It's that perfect, like, blue and pink, orange color. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. And then we went to another little spot that was the same way. Yeah. And uh, and it was, like, perfect. If you see the pictures, it's a perfect reflection. You've got the mount, big mountains, hills, trees. And some of the trees, the way the sun's hitting them, they were, like, orange. And they were perfectly reflecting. You could almost take the picture and flip it upside down and it would look the same no matter which way you put it. Yeah. Um, it was just perfect reflection. And it just so happened that where those reflections are in that picture ends up being where we saw bear. Like yes. or around, we kind of went around that and went on the road that we didn't know was there when we took those pictures and uh, stopped and was watching this loon and listening for it and trying to record its crazy sound again and uh and we're like you know right there at it i think we even get out oh yeah you got so out we, we take pictures you and jesse got out <laughs> and then we get back in the car and drive up that road turn around and come back to the almost exact spot we got out of the car and up from the water so i don't know if it had been down there or maybe in the time it took us to go down the road and come back it went down to the water, but a bear crossed the road coming back. So I don't know if it had been lurching underneath us and we just didn't see it or if it had, you know, crossed the road and went down there, you know, since we had been gone. But that was kind of wild. It's like, hmm. Yeah, I hope Jesse so didn't leave the keys in the car. That's what I was kept thinking. I was like, if he left the keys in the car, they are so messed over if a bear comes out of these woods. Because I'm leaving, y'all. <laughs> See ya. Peace out. Jackson uh, is not with us, so yeah. he's safe. That that would make Kenya happy. <laughs> then I'm just trying to make Whitney happy, so, you know. Well, it was the second time in the week that Jackson just thought we had been eaten by bears. Because when we went up to Twin Peaks and we were gone so long and he was at the car not feeling well, he's like, I just, I thought you guys had been eaten. But of course he didn't come looking for us. Um, and then when we were, you know, out that late that night, we stayed out till it actually got dark. So like midnight um, or midnight 30, whatever. And uh, finally got back home. Um, but man, we saw some really cool stuff. Pretty rough road. Got to see the bear. So we got a little sleep. Uh, Whitney and I went back to Anchorage, and you hung around to preach no. at Soldatna Church of Christ. Yeah, we just did some really just kind of hung around and didn't do anything big that day. We knew, kind of like you guys, we needed to rest. We were going to have a big day the next day. Kind of knew we were going to have a big night that night. So we uh, we drove over to Soldatna uh, earlier in the day and um, ate lunch. 
uh, found a little place, a little sports grill, and ate lunch. Um, went by like a visitor center where they had the it's Kenai's record king salmon uh, that had been caught, and it had been caught in that river right there where we had crossed several times. And so that's kind of what put them on the map, according to those those guys. So it was cool to get to see the um, that in a case, and then. Um, we went that night and, uh, and, and preached, I preached at Soldatna and got, in fact, met some people, connections to Rick and Sherry Owens. Their son was there, got to talk to him. So we ended up staying a little bit longer at the church, talking to people, um, ran back to town real quick to grab a bite to eat. And then we had a two and a half hour drive back to, um, to Anchorage. Of course, that afternoon we'd also ridden on the beach and, like a razor or one of those side by sides out on the ocean. And that was pretty neat. Saw some eagles and stuff. Again, you see eagles everywhere you go. It's kind of like mountains. You see eagles everywhere you go. Um, but on the way back, we decided to go back on that little road that we had seen the bear on. And um, we, it was a little bit of a detour, but we saw two mama bears or two big bears and two babies. And, uh, that was really cool. Jackson got pretty pumped about it. And uh, they were literally right outside the door of our car. I mean, like within 10 feet or 20 feet of the car. And uh, I had my foot on the gas pedal ready just in case <laughs> they decided to come at us. Um, but those pictures are kind of out there too, if you want to see them. But um, got some, and Jackson took most of those. So that was pretty cool. He was taking them while I was driving at the getaway car. And, uh, and then we, you know, it was a long, from there back to Anchorage was almost two hours. So I think we pulled into Anchorage at like midnight, uh, or 1230 had to drive through the rain to get back. Um, most of the drive was in the daylight, of course, but, uh, it kind of started getting dark as we got back and then I think got about three hours of sleep and then that was it. That was our trip. To get on the plane, right. fly out at seven a.m., take some pictures with some polar bears, stuffed. Saw long, the big, yeah, saw dead the, the big bears, and uh, and then flew back. And man, what an adventure! Like ten thirty p.m. in Huntsville. Which what was crazy was I got back here at midnight. I pulled in the driveway, kissed Kenya. She got in the car and left to drive to Hot Springs, Arkansas, at midnight. And uh, went to get her passport that they had not gotten oh. and drove back the next day after getting it, got to spend most of, uh, you know, a little bit of time on Friday together, uh, helped her get out and get on the road on Saturday morning. And they flew to Africa and uh, they've been there uh, ever since and will be there till June the 15th. The Helping Healing Humor podcast with Ben and Travis is brought to you by Freedom 5K on July the 8th. We will be running it in the Shoals area and all proceeds go to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. I hate to see children suffer. I used to avoid St. Jude commercials because I just couldn't bear to see the images of kids fighting for their life against a dreaded disease. Then one day we got the call. Several weeks before, doctors in Huntsville had performed surgery on my son to remove a small tumor on his face. The call was from St. Jude. The doctors in Memphis wanted to take more margin around the tumor and run more tests. Within days, we were walking the halls and pulling cypress in the famous Little Red Wagons. I had to see the kids, a lot of them, some in wheelchairs, many missing hair as a result of their treatments, people from all over the world and all different backgrounds. All came for one reason, hope. Hope that they would be able to find a cure. It's that hope that gets me to run even when I don't feel like it. I run not for me, but for the young ones. I run to give them hope. Thankfully, my son is doing well. He bears the mark of St. Jude on his left cheek in the form of a scar. But it's a reminder to me of the fight that other kids are still fighting every day. The Freedom 5K on July 8th is just one more way to raise money for St. Jude. If you can run, then we hope that you will sign up. If you would like to sponsor, you can do that too. For more information or to register, go to benandtravis.com backslash store. That's benandtravis.com backslash store. One of the points that I think bears out in the discussion we've had uh, on this episode. Bears out. Positives. That's nice. 
positives of outdoors that we've been talking about is social interaction and community engagement. I mean, a lot, large portion, obviously, I was there with Whitney, my wife. You were there with Jackson. Uh, speaking of social interaction, of course, we got to hang out with our former floor mate at Farrell Hall, uh, Jesse Elmore, great tour guide. I mean, I think about uh, just the cost it would take to have someone like that as a tour guide that we got for free uh, yeah. and then throw in the fact that he was knocking back espressos. I don't know if that's what he was knocking back, but uh, he was energy inter- Red Bull energetic for sure. <laughs> um, and so outdoors often provide opportunities for social interaction and community engagement in which helps support a network. You're talking about meeting people that were connected to other people you already knew. Yeah. Um, and to know that we have brothers and sisters up there who are, you know, very committed uh, to the Lord and the toughest human beings on the planet. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it wasn't just Jesse, but you know, Scott was giving us input about things to do and Addy, we've given you a hard time, but Addy, really did give us some great places to see. And if it wasn't for Addy throwing in some of those ideas, there would have been a lot less um, adventure and exploring and maybe a little less sore muscles, but still it was fantastic what we got to see because of our family that was going, Hey, go do this. Hey, this is something great. Celia provided a lot of the boost to go by and see um, Norman Lowell's place and the and the towers, you know, that the the uh, KNLS and all of those different things. We had people, you know, throwing us some ideas. And yeah, I mean, a lot of people who go to Alaska do tours, you know, train rides, see kind of what's on there. But we got to see some of the the things that I mean, I, there are some people who see it. But I talked to a few people on the plane that were from there. I talked to some of the people at the youth forum and they're like you've done more in these couple of days than i've done i've lived here my whole life yeah so i mean that was that was kind of good to hear like we weren't just living a boring life while we were up there we were oh no we were getting, we were getting it done so oh no um, uh we were trying to squeeze as much out of the sunshine as the native alaskans that may be the closest thing we were <laughs> to them uh, but you know celia celia was great that we stayed with uh at her house you know she was that's talking about the social interaction you know we'd sit up and talk to her and she would share stories about alaska and about them because they came you know kind of um her husband came up there to be a police officer and they kind of had to make their way in alaska and it was really cool hearing her stories too absolutely uh, well, we appreciate all the people that listen to the show, that we have a network with, that we're connected to. Um, and you know, we've mentioned several times the great people of Alaska that loved on us, treat us well, set us up perfectly. And obviously, if you're ever in that neck of the woods, be sure to check out uh, all these things, specifically Anchorage Church of Christ and Saldotna, uh, two groups that we were able to visit. And, you know, if they can put up with us for a weekend then they're certainly going to love you because you're way more awesome than we are. And the only thing that would make you more awesome is if you rated and reviewed and shared this on your social media, preferably five stars. So why don't you do that for us? And we'll just keep cranking out content like this uh, with the all pro counselor, Ben Hayes and his uh, sidekick in crime, Travis Creasy. Well, and let me say one other thing. Uh, Soldatna is looking for a minister right now. And so they, um, this is for free for them because they were good to me and I uh, got to hang out with them. Um, they're looking for a minister. So if you were looking to go to one of the most beautiful places on earth, that also happens to be one of the toughest places on earth. Uh, there's a lot of, um, great stuff to see, but yeah, um, you, you might, you might have to bring some, uh, some manliness and womanliness to the, uh, to the party, but uh, it would be an awesome experience uh, to go up there and to preach for God's people and to spend some time with them. I think that you'll really like them. So if you're looking for a position uh, preaching or kind of mission mindedness, um, there's not a church on every corner like there is in our area, 
Uh, and so it's a, it's a mission field, a lot of good things that can be done. So Soldatin is a great place. You can contact me and I can give you some details, um, or I'm sure you can look them up and find them online. Well, as that brings us to a close and really our podcast about Alaska, uh, once again, we're thankful to you. Have a great day. Thanks for being with us for this episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast. Be sure to download our free ebook, 28 Days of Focused Living at benandtravis.com and receive all of our helping healing and humor extra content directly in your inbox. We look forward to having you join us at the same Ben and Travis time, same Ben and Travis channel.